Hey, welcome back to this third video on this state series. And in this one, we're gonna be talking about the same counter component as we had last time with the same count state. And we've got our button here. We can increment our state like we did before, but also we've got this button for disabling the top button. So the way it's gonna do that is it's going to set some state. It's gonna set this active to be the opposite of what it is. And we've got this other call up here to use state and it's active is gonna start off as true. And then right here for the button that we can click on for the count, it's disabled is going to be true if we are not active. And so since the active is set to true, we are not disabled. But as soon as I click on the disable button, we can no longer click on this button. Okay, so pretty simple UI. But the point is that if you ever want to have two pieces of state, you're going to call use state twice. Normally, we'll talk about more situations later on in this video. But notice that if there, there's ever a DOM event that needs to change a part of the UI, the common ground here is state. So based on this state, what does my UI look like? Well, if this button wants to change what the UI looks like, it needs to change the state and then that will cause a re-render. And then based on the new state, what does our UI look like? Okay, so state is that common ground. You don't go from an event straight to trying to update the DOM. You go from the event to changing state and then the UI becomes a function of that new state. Okay, so we want to set or rather we want to call use state twice or maybe even three times if we had like let's say we had some other state whatever that is and what you don't want to do in react is you never want to conditionalize these things so you can't put an if statement even if it was if true which would obviously always be true but we don't want to do that in react you can see that react is already complaining about this they're saying that the react hook use state is called conditionally react hooks must be called in the exact same order in every component render. Okay, so you can't do that. And the whole idea is because each of these calls to use state is almost like registered into React uh, based on its call order. So the very first time there was a render, this first call to use state was registered as like a zero in like some array somewhere. And then this one would be registered as like a like a one somewhere. And then this one would be registered as the, the third call to use state. And so you can see that sometimes if uh, we had a condition, like let's say the condition was count is bigger than eight. Okay, so if this is the condition, then technically this is gonna be the very first call to use state, and this would be the second call to use state. But in other circumstances, this would be the third call to use state, and this would be the second call to use state. So this would confuse React. So because of their little internal numbering system that they do, you can't do this with use state. You have to keep them in the same order every time. Now what I've done is I've refactored the code so that we have one call to use state and we're managing all the state inside of an object. You can do this too. Then in this case, this would be our stateful object and we can have this set state function to change that object. Okay, so let's go down here and take a look. We've got a few things. We've got the disabled is based on state.active. So everything is like state.count or state.active now because all the state is inside of that object. And then we've got this set state function. And so that way we can do something like this and we can say, when we go to click on the button, set the state to be this object where count is one bigger than what it is. So just be careful if you wanna store your state in an object like this because watch what kind of weird bugs might happen. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna click on count and yes, it increments, but it also disables itself. That's a little strange. So what's going on with that? Well, let's examine this a little bit closer. Whenever you call this state setting function that you get back from use state, that wants to set the entirety of our state, which means right now by setting the count to be one bigger than what it is, this becomes the entire new state object, which doesn't have active equals true. We want we just want to keep active equals true, but set the count to be one bigger, which means when we do this, it's almost like we're completely getting rid of active equals true. And then right here, when we go to check to see if we're disabled based on active equals true, that doesn't exist. And so we're getting like this, this weird UI error because the, the Boolean is, is just not what we expect it to be. Like there is no Boolean for state.active. And so it would pretend like it's false. And therefore, uh, if we're not false, then we are disabled. So that's why it's acting like we're disabled right now. What we would have to do in this case is we would have to account for all the state that we want from the old state and then only change the stuff that we want to change. Okay, so we do that and now it works. Okay, so going down here, we would have the same thing. If we go to click on the disable button, it's gonna completely throw away the count state. So we have to account for all the state that we had before and keep the active as the only thing that we wanna change, but keep all the other state just where it was. So now we have a working component and 
it works like expected. And we had to do some interesting things because of storing all of our state inside of an object. So just keep that in mind if you want to do this sort of thing, that that's what you're going to have to do. Is that the only reason why we maybe shouldn't, uh, you know, should avoid like maybe doing objects for our states uh, or not avoid it? Uh, no, there's other reasons as well. So, for example, the React team actually designed useState to be called uh, more than one time for each piece of state. So I think the React team would say that you should probably have two calls to use state in this case. And that's because they wanted you to be able to do custom hooks. So for example, if I had a custom hook, I can do like, you know, use some custom hook. So you're gonna be making custom hooks when you're doing React and who knows what this gives you back. But the point is there might be calls to use state in there. There might be one, two, or maybe five calls to use state. Let's just pretend like there was four calls to use state. When React calls counter, they're gonna see that there's four calls to use state. They're gonna consider this to be the fifth call to use state. Okay, so that's another reason, by the way, why you can't conditionalize your calls to your custom hooks. And the reason why custom hooks have to start with the word use is so the lyncher can tell you not to conditionalize them. That's pretty much the only reason why they have to start with the word use is so that they can keep track of all the calls to other hooks inside of your custom hook, such as use state. But the reason why I'm bringing all this up right now is because I just wanted to show you that if if we had an API from React where we could only call use state one time and we had to organize all of our state inside of an object, that would make it so we couldn't put state inside of custom hooks. And so the reason why they have it so that it's a single call to use state for each piece of state is so that we can have some state out here and some state inside of our custom hooks. So it's actually a pretty cool API that way. Now I wanna talk about sharing state. So we've got this counter component, but what if I wanted to share its state with this other component called report? Well, notice that app renders both counter and report, and so it's the owner of both. And so what we can do is we can lift state because I can't really share state directly between here and my adjacent sibling, or if I've got like a big tree of React components, I can't share state directly from one component in one part of the tree over here, this other component way over there in the other part of the tree. But what I can do is lift state. In other words, I can take this state and put it up to the nearest common ancestor component, and then I can pass it down to both. And so in the case of counter, I got this little trick here. I can do props too, and then I can do count and set count. Okay, so down here in the counter component, we're gonna have count and set count. Now, this is where the state is. This function changes that state. So if I pass that down into the counter, when the button gets clicked, we're calling set count, which really changes this state up here, which causes a re-render, which means on the next re-render, use state is gonna return the latest count here and then pass that back down into the counter so that we can show it in the button. But then we can also pass it down into this, the report. Okay, so count equals count, and then we can receive that right here, count. And then I can change this. Okay, and that's how you lift state. Let's see if it works. We click here and the report works. So that's how you lift state to share it between components.